We are importing 500 billion Kenya shillings every year of food items. 500 billion from edible oil to maize to rice to all those 500 billion US dollars we are importing. Uganda does not import that much food. Tanzania does not import that much food. We are the only country that imports that much food. Why? Because we haven't paid as much attention to agriculture. And number two, we need to understand that while Uganda 80% is, is arable with rain, Kenya only 15% is arable with rain. Tanzania is a completely different story. Almost 60% of their land has rain and is arable. Ours only 15%. That's why we are importing $500 million uh, of food into Kenya. So what do we need to do? We need to pay attention to our agriculture. The reason why we have invested, and that is why in the manifesto that I sold to the people of Kenya, agriculture, modernization, mechanization is one of the big tickets that I decided that I'm going to do. We have changed the trajectory on our stable food. Today, we are producing more in terms of maize, which is our stable food. In fact, my plan is that by next year, we shouldn't be importing maize into Kenya. We, we should be producing enough. This year, we have increased our production of maize by 40%. The issue of uh, exchange rate is a factor of many aspects. I came into office when there was a lot of fluid activity in the, in the space. We had a serious situation caused by COVID. We had a big war in Europe. We have a huge drought, climate change, caused by climate change. And all those factors combined to create a situation globally that increase the price of commodities that we import, increase demand for the dollar. And in fact, what has happened is that the Fed, that is the, the central bank of the US, if you wish, has increased interest rates from 0 0.25 to 5.25. In fact, in the history, this is the steepest interest rate increase in its history. What that has done, and, and because every country tried, including Kenya, every country tried to enhance liquidity because of the crisis, we were maintaining an artificial exchange rate. You had the central bank governor, Mr. Thuge, say this uh, exchange rate of 130 that we were maintaining was artificial. I mean, it was maintained using our foreign exchange reserves. The government of Kenya spent $2.6 billion. That is almost 400 billion Kenya shillings in you know, supporting the Kenya shillings so that it doesn't, it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't go to its actual <coughs> exchange rate. For the first time, every Kenyan, even those who today cannot afford nothing, they will have a health insurance for the first time. Number two, those who, you know, and you know the kind of unfairness that there can be. Mama Mboga is paying 10% of our income for health insurance. William Ruto, the president of Kenya, is paying 0.001%. Why? All we are saying is let everybody pay an equal percentage of what they earn. Is that too much to ask? What will happen? The people who are paying 500 will come down to 300. Is there anybody saying that there are people who, uh, there are people who will get an insurance cover who do not have? No. Are there people who are saying that uh, those at the bottom of the pyramid will reduce their money or their contribution from 500 to 300? No. 
the people who are, who are talking are not talking about those things because they are not convenient. And because many of us believe don't, those people don't matter. I want to tell you, my friends, those people are also Kenyans. No, they matter the same way we do. Let us give them a chance. And, and, and Mr. President, Let us give them a that chance is, that is to also sure. participate in Kenya. Garama ya maisha inachangiwa na vitu vitatu. Ya kwanza ni garama ya chakula. Right? Na nikisema uchumi, uchumi iko na uchumi ya tumbo. Nataka nikuulize. Na wa Kenya wenzangu. Tumefanya lolote kupunguza garama ya chakula? Yes. We have done major steps. The price of food items is today lower than it was a year ago. It is a fact. Lakini, of course, it's not convenient for certain people to accept. That's number one. Number two, globally, where is Kenya? Uchumi wa numbers. And these are not my figures. <laughs> We've brought down inflation from nine point something to now 6.8. Those are figures, global figures of the World Bank. Number two, our economy is growing at 5.4%. Not my figures, World Bank figures, <laughs> right? In fact, they, they put Kenya is the 29th fastest growing economy globally. Those are figures out there. Of course, many people don't want to accept. I know that there is still no money in people's pockets. Uchumi wa mfuko, bado. Ndiyo bado. Yeah? Are we, doing, are we doing something about it? Yes. That is why we're spending more money in education. Yeah? We're putting money, more money in education. In fact, this year, we are putting an extra 120 billion in education. To do what? To make sure that we reduce outlay by Kenyans to fund education. Number two, we are putting more money in health. That is why we've passed four laws. What do we want to do? We want to make sure every ordinary citizen has a health insurance. Those who are paying 500 will come down to 300. We are going to make sure that we don't leave nobody behind. That is why I am going out of my way to create jobs. I am very positive. I am very clear in my mind that I have only one mission, to change Kenya. And by the way, I have every intention to do it. And I know very well that it's not, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. But it is never too late to do the right thing. You cannot be wrong by doing the right thing. So I intend to transform Kenya. We have always uh, known and wanted to do what we know is right. We know we should create jobs. We know what we need to do to create jobs. We know we should uh, control uh, our expenditure. We know what we, but the, the thing that has been lacking is somebody to lead the way in doing it. I intend to lead the way in doing it. Our economy today is out of debt distress. And that is the truth. For your information, if I didn't step in, let me even say, if I wasn't president, the kind of decisions I have made, very difficult decisions, you know, very painful decisions, decisions that I know they will cause pain, but it is better we make those decisions now than get Kenya into that distress. There are almost eight countries in our continent, including one that went into debt distress. I don't want to mention countries, you know them, last almost three weeks or, or one month. That is the worst thing that can happen to any country, to go into debt distress. We, have, we are now out of debt distress. Our economy is stable, but the difficult part is still there. We still have to navigate. All we have done is to avoid the cliff, right? That we have avoided because we have negotiated, uh, we have 
put brakes on expenditure. Mm -hmm. We have negotiated a good package with the World Bank, with IMF, with development partners, with bilateral uh, countries, China, Europe, and everywhere. And that's why I have been on the road uh, so many times. People ask, what is he doing? It was necessary for me to step in and stabilize so that Kenya does not go into debt distress. Tunaongeza bei ya VAT kwa sababu gani? Kenya tuko katika kiwango inaitwa middle income economy. We are in the same category as South Africa, we are in the same category as uh, Morocco, we are in the same category as Tunisia. I want you to check their taxes. You know? Because our taxes are now at 15.6% of GDP. 15.6% of GDP. Taxes in South Africa is 27% of GDP. Taxes in uh, Morocco is 32% of GDP. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to answer the question because, you know, the people of Kenya are being pushed and being told, look, you are paying more taxes than other countries. Is that true? That is not true. Now, we are paying the Let's same taxes to to like, uh, like all countries yeah. that are in our same category. And let me tell you the difference so that, I, so that you can take the chance. Let me tell you the category. If we go to the market, the countries that are in LDCs, they get a lower interest rate than those of us who are in middle income. Come. So we, you cannot compare them and us. We are in a different category. And for your information, countries like France, their tax as a percentage of GDP is 45%. We are only at 15.6%. That's the difference. All we are saying is, let us have a country where nobody is left behind. Uh, maybe the question was We are uh, just thinking about ourselves. Yeah. We are discussing how our salary is going to be how 1.5% of our salary. There are people who have never seen pay, pay, who have never seen a pay slip. There are people who really, genuinely, don't have a chance at life. I am asking the rest of Kenya, please let us give a chance at life to many more Kenyans than those of us who are employed. And there are only three million. We have 10 million people out there. Countries like Singapore, like Malaysia, like Korea. We all have been talking about them. We've been saying, oh, you know, we were at the same level with Korea, but today they are different from us. They made tough decisions. That's why they are where they are. We have to make tough decisions if we have to catch up. I mean, we, if we want to continue to make convenient, you know, uh, uh, politically correct uh, decisions, we will continue to remain in the same place. And I know, for example, that it is politically expensive, you know? I would be a very popular person if I ab abolished tomorrow. I said, okay, let's forget about the housing thing. People will call for Mr. Transforming Kenya is not a walk in the park. Transforming Kenya is not going to, to be done using convenient, politically correct, popular Mr. decisions. Mr. Right. Some timing, of the decisions may be difficult, but they will be, they, we will all see the benefits as we go. No, no doubt, no You're doubt about that, Mr. That, President. Uh, it, is, it, it is the wrong time. We've had housing as a plan for the last 50 years. Are you telling me for the last 50 years, it, 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 the, 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 there was no correct time? It is never too late. It is never wrong to do the right thing. I have signed a bilateral agreement with Saudi, UAE, with Germany, with Canada, and many other countries we are exploring possibilities. And for your information, as a result of those what I have been doing, between now and next month, January, the first 10,000 Kenyans will be leaving to go and work in foreign countries so that they can support themselves and support Kenya. Because many countries have established a strategy on how to grow our uh, to grow their foreign exchange earnings. Mm -hmm.